My name is Chris Gibson. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon, which means that I perform cardiac surgery on the heart and lung surgery, which is considered thoracic surgery. I perform the majority of my surgery at St. Bernardine's Medical Center in San Bernardino, California. I have been in this hospital for 26 years. I've been practicing cardiac surgery for almost 30. In the course of that time, I have probably performed in the range of seven to 8,000 open heart operations. Cardiac surgery is what I wanted to do first. I mean, I went through medical school and I found that virtually every rotation I was on, I really loved. Uh, medicine is an amazing profession. Cardiac surgery took the longest amount of training. It was sort of like at the very end of the alley. And you continued to do general surgery, vascular surgery, continued to want to learn how to do things better, and finally went on to do cardiac surgery. When I started doing cardiac surgery, the operations tended to be uh, less involved and simpler. It was before the advent of uh, catheter intervention with the cardiologist, and we frequently operated on people that were 50 years old that had normal hearts and a two-vessel bypass. Today, we're operating on people that are 80 years old, have a lot of problems with their heart. They may need four, five, six-vessel bypass, one valve, two valve being operated on. During my career, the top three technological advances have involved in making the surgery safer. Being able to preserve the heart with cold solutions, including potassium, amino acids, and sugars, were extremely important. What we call retrograde cardioplegia, a catheter put into the big vein in the back of the heart that ices it down. We can keep hearts stopped for two or three hours to do these surgeries and do them very meticulously. The second advent was the development of new clamps. In the early days, there were very large steel clamps that you could only put in one place. And as time went on, using a technology that allowed the clamps to become smaller, the jaws to become soft, to be put in different areas, made the surgery a lot safer in terms of uh, loosening up material in the ascending aorta, which would give rise to strokes. Or if that material went to the rest of the body, such as your intestine or your legs, you could die because of that. Having those techniques decreased the stroke rate with surgery from 7% to 3% to down around a half of 1% today. And then the third thing was probably the advent of the valve technologies, the different products that came on the market. The initial valves were very large and bulky and loud, and we have a wide range of things that we can use today and tailor to each patient. Mortality rates even today in smaller hospitals can be as high as 10% with cardiac surgery. When I started in the field, they were routinely 7%. I think today in our hospitals and our practices, depending on the patients you operate on, they're in the range of one or 2%. That's been an incredible improvement and uh, the field has just evolved tremendously. My advice to a patient would be to just go to a hospital that does a large volume of cardiac surgery because it's a very complicated field. And uh, these are operations that need a tremendous amount of support and they need uh, very experienced people. I think that is absolutely key. 